everyone and welcome to another match this time we have severance versus elysium and we're starting out with severance on the killer ward playing the spira against the survivors of elysium and already we are in a chase with ipec gonna be playing i believe that is uh saga from Ellen wake 2 and yeah. once again we have the blood favor it's it's a fun part it, it's and been I, entering its way into DBDL. It's kind of just been encroaching, right? And now you play that pallet, you have, you, you again, Spirit turns everything into a 50-50. And I pick, unfortunately, going to be losing that one. So Severance isn't a team we have a lot of, um, isn't a team that we lo have a lot of game tape on. What we do know is that they were good enough for one win in Group D. And now they are going up against our second place team, Elysium. I mean... There was a time, even during last tournament, where people still pegged Elysium to be the number one team. It was only really until the very grand finals that Eternal just really came out swinging, you know, shades of, shades of like 2022 all over again, where they're just winning every single tournament. But Elysium, you can never count them out of the conversation. You know, players like Swatter, Ipic, Grenal, Pedro, they're just kind of nutcases uh, at the end of the day. They're pound for pound some of the best players that we have and i mean yeah if if we are able to see a strong force and severance against them well what a statement that might be yeah and i think i think this match is going to go to show just where everyone lies in D because both of these teams won but it wasn't it wasn't a clean sweep there were no clean sweeps in this group so Pedro goes down in a one-for-one -one generator, does get done, and getting back on track with what I was talking about as soon as uh, Saga is going to go down, I pick. Um, there were no clean sweeps, and there were some close matches, but I think this one is going to show exactly where everyone stands in this group. Yeah, this is going to be what separates the men from the boys right here, and Guess who our deliverance survivor is? It's Ipic. Welcome to the club. You're not allowed to play the game anymore. Anyway, uh, we see the perk setup that we have from our killer. Ruin, um, uh, Ruin, uh, Pain Resonance. Lethal Pursuer was there at the start. There's nothing to synergize with it. There's no aura reading in the rest of Ward's kit. No perks or add-ons that they give some of that. So it was just a very early game track the survivor down situation. I mean... It, it, it is sort of an early game centered build, right? You would expect Ruin to go at some point. You'd expect Blood Favor to pop lethal. Of course, that's only gone up for nine seconds. And that, well, there we have it. That's going to be, I believe, Blood Favor leaving the game once this one, once this uh, proc of it expires. Pain Resonance is going to be your only slowdown for the vast majority of the game. That being said, your early game has been good enough for a bunch of injuries and two hooks onto Ipic with only one generator completed. Should be two relatively soon, but again, Pedro and Grenell did have to take some time to... Um, they had to take some time to help reset each other. And now we're going to be seeing whether Ward's body blocks are going to be on point or whether they aren't, and the pull is able to come through onto Ipic. Yeah, it, it was a couple unfortunate trees made it so Ward couldn't perfectly body block. And props to Grenel for being able to get around. Oh, nice stun. Very nice stun to keep Ipic in the game. And we have Pedro here, ready Hello, for Pedro. the body block and the pa er, and the flash, I'd say. And then also, not to be confused for the Pedro from last game. <laughs> Uh, yeah, Pedro, Pe Pedro not to be confused with Pedro, of course. Now, we actually do have him on the pallet. Pedro is in here. We'll have the timing for that save, extending the life force of Ipic as much as humanly possible. Ipic still has the dead art to work with as well. Again, perfect world, you have deliverance, but unfortunately things aren't perfect in the realm of the entity as we are learning very, very quickly. And Pedro is just in a hot pursuit right now. Pedro is playing this, uh, like, the average, like, 8,000-hour survivor player, uh, simply ignoring the generators, playing for the pallet saves, playing for the flashlight saves. And it shouldn't take too long for Ipic to eventually be felt here. We're going to have another use of power. You run out into the open. But the body block is really good from Pedro. Now injured up is not going to be quite so simple. 
to go for these saves at any point in time if he does opt to do so. Bolts coming through here from IPIC. One after another after another. More noise information being given to the Spirit. And are you able to make this pallet? No, you're not. You extend your time. Extend your distance. You extend hard. the chase with the E-Press. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the era of Dead Art population. IPIC uh, going to be sitting on this pallet. I believe Pedro wants to be here for the save, but has to be a little bit careful right now. Yeah, absolutely. And yeah, we sprint first. He was ready to use the sprint first for the save, but had to use it to get away. Ward doing a good job of zoning him off. This should be the kill onto I think the Ward spending more time not knowing that no one is really here. So now with the tenacity. I think has been able to get out of the way and recover and might be able to make it to uh, might be able to make it to his teammates. Everyone. Oh no. Oh, oh no. Oh, no. And that's I believe. It, it, it's, uh, it's 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 protect the president. I fix the president and everyone else is the secret service. <laughs> the secret service is dead. I mean, uh, ironic considering I think the one wearing the FBI shirt, but you know, you tell what you can get at this point. Do I look like an American to usually don't answer that question? I might not like the answer. Pedro is going to be put on this hook. Uh, that's going to be the first pain res proc to come through. So a little bit of regression on Grenal's generator. Ward is going to be eyeing up these gens, not actually finding Grenal on that one. But I do believe, yeah, it's this one over in the corner of the map. Grenau is going to be making a hasty exit. And Ward... Ward's looking for something here. I just don't know what. He's looking for the Holy Grail. Yeah. <laughs> looking... He's, he's, look, he's looking for Obama's last name. That, that's that's got to be it. Yo. <laughs> um, and... Uh, so... <laughs> <laughs> so yes, <laughs> cameo appearance. Anyway, uh, Ward is going through. Eventually, does find Grenau here. You look at the survivor situation. Compare that to how the early game was, and they are all healthy. Um, I pick the one player dead on hook is completely fine. Isn't in any danger right now. It is Grenau the one taking the chase, and eventually, it would get a nice hit one through again. We cannot discount. Ward being kind of a unit on the spirit, but the longer this match goes on, it's increasingly more likely that we're looking at a couple of escapes coming through from the side of Elysium. Yeah, and one generator left to go. Ran out running where this generator's already been completed. And this... It's looking rough for Ward here. This might just be one kill. And mm. Granite does finally go down at the very least. Maybe you're able to get a pain resonance depending on where the hooks are. It doesn't nope. matter. It doesn't matter. You're also sure as hell ain't bringing a know-it. You're playing the spirit. There's no world in which the gens all get completed, right? So you don't even have that to fall back on to get yourself some extra kills in the end game. So... It's a fresh hook, uh, that could always work for the tiebreakers, but again, the expectation on Spirit is that the survivors are not going to complete all the generators, it's simple as that. So Ward has already fallen a bit behind schedule, it's just the, it's the team play differential uh, that we saw from uh, Elysium, the fact that IPIC lived for so long, even, you know, sometimes you look and think, oh well, it's the Deliverance Survivor, and we found him first. That's just an easy win for the killer, right? Not really, because the rest of the team is there to cover up for that minor transgression pretty damn cleanly, and they're even gonna try for the two-man here, and they're gonna succeed. The first hit didn't actually come through onto IPIC, and now it's the attempt to... Oh, no. Oh, no. They, they, they want the kill onto Grenal so badly, but... I don't think it's going to happen. The Grenal goes down in the exit gate. And now you can pressure everyone out. You know, Pedro heal isn't tech. able heal to. Is coming. Yeah, yeah. I was going to say, Pedro's not able to heal tech, but it doesn't matter because Swatter's there. And now Ipick is here. And basically the whole the whole squad has showed up. And a little lucky. They actually right out. full heal. They they're not even heal teching. Uh... They're just healing him. They're not even teching. They're just healing. <laughs> oh, mate. Phenomenal performance coming out there from Elysium. I... 
that is one way to start a match. That's all I have to say. Yeah, big statement coming out from Alicia. I mean, you have to try and bounce back from that one for Severance. We are still second in the group. You aren't out of it just yet, and it ain't over till the fat lady sings. We'll be back after a short break to see Severance on their own survivor round. Don't go anywhere. We'll be back shortly. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to our matchup today, Elysium versus Severance. And I'm going to be honest, the Severance survivors, they, they have their work cut out for them. Elysium put on an absolute survivor clinic just there. Uh, they were able to get, they were able to get everyone out of the gate. I believe they only gave up about three, four hook stages, if that. It, it was very, it was dominant. The main thing that we need to know is that all Pedro needs to do here is secure, I don't know, about five, six hooks. That that sounds about reasonable, which isn't, shouldn't be too much of a challenge, right? That being said. We did see the Elysium Survivors put on that kind of clinic, and Swing and a Miss comes through from Pedro. There's nothing to indicate that the Severance Survivors are not capable of this as well. Yeah, and uh, I, th I think the exact win condition is uh, either six hooks, four fresh, or seven hooks, three fresh. Or, sorry, just seven hooks. Um, and it looks like Ward, going on a little bit of a run, manages to win the mind game there and continues to win the mind game over at this TL wall. However, Pedro not quite going to be able to reach him over at the fun bus. He's going to have to deal with this pallet now. And, and then, I mean, for reference, we do expect that a spirit will force That is the standard. And I mean, we're, we're at this fun bus and Pedro seems to be struggling here. This isn't a great first chase. The vault comes through and eventually you're going to be caught out. And I mean, the blood favor is still up. It, it lasted a while in this chase. Uh, I'm dying seems to have been removed, but the, the chase lasted so long that eventually you just weren't getting any value out of blood favor. And so much distance was made that it didn't even matter. First hook finally going to be coming through with two generates complete for the survivors. Now no more blood favor. You only have Grim Embrace to work with as a perk. That's it. Is, is, is that going to save you? And all of a sudden, off that early game, we need to be thinking that this isn't, you know, unwinnable for Severance. Yeah, and uh, I'm just being told I was wrong about the Wincon. Wincon is five stages. I am... I thought I saw four stages in the last game. Turns out I was wrong. And uh, board game pulled off the hook. Plus for the people, if anyone is getting chased, it's going to be a very quick M1 into a phase walk. Is Pedro going to be able to get some follow-up hit? Not quite. It, it almost seems like Pedro isn't as confident on the on the spirit as maybe previously thought. Um, Ward is going to be taking the chase once again. Maybe they, they thought he had a great chase the first time around. Let's get him in chase again. I don't know. But we have three survivors injured right now, and that is not good for Severance. I mean, Ward doesn't mind taking that chase uh, on account of the fact that there's five stages, right? Imagine that Pedro gets two hooks on two separate survivors and then gets a last ah! and then gets the last one on a hook. Can just be counter death, and that guarantees your win, right? Ward doesn't mind that because if Ward gets hooked, okay, well, there's only two more extra stages to give up after that first one. There's still a bit of an opportunity to get up. Now Henu going to be in their first hook of the match, ticking up Grim Embrace for a little bit longer uh, to get some gen blockage. I mean, it's it is slow down for sure. It's not spectacular slow down, but in this case, it might have just made all the difference because you found the gen that you worked on. You theorize that this might have been two man. You do see scratch marks around, and if you can grab, you know. Our loss here, that would be spectacular, but instead it's going to be Cartney. And remember, if Cartney goes down here, then that can just be camped out to that fifth hook stage, and Pedro can have a very simple day at the office. That is absolutely true, and keep in mind, Henu is still... Okay, I spoke too soon. I was going to say, Henu is still on the hook, and I didn't know that anyone was in position to go for the save, Cartney. Gonna be going for the vault as Henry's looks like gonna be getting tunneled out maybe. 
Ward here to take a quick hit, and now all four survivors are injured. Fanatophobia would be getting a lot of value right now, uh, but it's all going to come down to the chases, and Ward not quite able to get through the pallet. And, and so now it's ticking up. That's the third stage, and it seems a lot like we're dwelling on these individual stages. Yeah, because these individual stages matter so much more when you only need when you only need five of them to win. But that's another gen popping. You have one generator left. You still need two hook stages for Pedro. Every survivor is injured, and oh, is that a trade that you can get? Not quite, but you were catching Alos with their pants down a little bit. You can commit to this, right? Get a cheeky phase walk through. You know the bomb came through. You hear the footsteps, and that's just textbook spirit gameplay right there. Pedro doing a phenomenal job. Fourth stage, and I mean, what 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 can you do now? What can you do now from the survivor side? You're going to get this hook here um, onto Alos. One more, and that's game. Yeah, pretty much. I think you have to. Oh no. Well, that's it. I mean, you can go for a little more if you're Pedro. Maybe you're a little, maybe you're a little confident. Maybe you're a little happy about that one, but. Knowing that you have to get the injury through, hearing the vaults through on the fun bar. One, two, one, two, and eventually slicing them right in two. And that's pretty damn good from Pedro. You, you, you get your stages. Arguably not the fanciest win. I mean, Ward had a phenomenal first chase, which did sort of send this series into the balance of exactly how things might go, forcing us to reconsider, like... No, the, the, there's no way Pedro doesn't get at least five hook stages, right? Right? However, it's not a world that we have to live in. God is real. Uh, things are moving properly. I don't know. But things are things are normal in the world of DVD. A spirit can, in fact, get more than five hook stages. Yeah, I mean, that said, this is still a pretty good survivor performance. I mean, with that flashlight, with that flashlight save, I think I might have just lost my mind there. But these hook stages are all spread out of the board, and the survivors might be able to escape. Ward does go down, however, this is going to be the first kill of the game. One generator remaining, and we do see a survivor far off in the distance working on it. And uh, again, the Delhi curse has struck. I, whoever goes through and makes the the videos for YouTube, aka Mathis, I'm pretty sure. Do, do me a favor, like, how, how many times someone has been Delhi cursed today? Worse, <laughs> we, worse, we start individually tracking the stats of how often the oh, deliberate no. survival will get tunneled out. But you know what? Let's just give Toby even more jobs to do while we're at it, right? I already let that guy do my taxes at this point. Anyway, uh, it's, it, it, it's just, it's a lot. Um, it, it, it's just... It's just very surprising, isn't it? Just how often we do see that. Now, we do have this gen over here. It's close to completion. Uh, Pedro's gone over to the other side of the map. It is almost certain that his last gen is going to be completed. And you've got to give credit where it's due to seven survivors. Being able to do five gens against a spirit is is going to be a good performance. And it will be a good performance. Unfortunately, they were really staring down the barrel, having only managed to do <laughs> four stages on their own um, on their own killer side but at the end of the day that's arguably gifting a win to Pedro yeah that is the unfortunate thing. but now I mean ooh these gates not exactly favorable for the survivors but they're already working on it we might see these last two survivors getting out the door and you know if that's going to be the case I mean, that's, that's still not a performance you're really upset with if you are Severance, because like we've been talking about, 4K is the standard. Now, Cartney might be going down here, barring a really good body block work, managing to reach this pallet and maybe a hatch play, maybe, possibly. I mean, no. Nope, wait, wait, wait. <laughs> Oh no, oh mate, okay, that might be the saddest thing that I've seen in my uh, in, in my several years of living. Okay, well, Hatch gonna be shot in the face of Carney right now. It's just practicing 
for the DBD League 1v1 ladder, which I can, I guess, take the opportunity to promote while we're here. Um, now, I don't, um, I don't play ladder all that much. However, however, um, it is currently season seven, uh, lasting from August to November 2024. There are prizes for our winners. First place, $150. Second place, $100. Third place, $50, and places four to eight, $10 each a pop. So if you want to be like Cartney in that final chase, being able to juice the spirit for a bit longer, make sure to hop on the DBDL ladder and, uh, you know, play it for what it's worth. You might win something out of it. That was probably the worst corporate shill I have done of my entire life, but you know what? How something. did you have that just ready to go? Uh, I'm built different. Because like, I couldn't have even told you what season we are in ladder. I don't, I don't touch ladder. I don't, I don't do the whole one v one thing. I just play the game from time to time, and I like talking about the game. We do um, like talking about the game. Arguably, we like the sound of our own voices a little too much. <laughs> that is definitely true, and uh, that was set number one going the way of Elysium. And honestly, it was never in doubt. After it was never in doubt after that kill around. Let, let, yeah, let, let it wasn't really. It wasn't really in doubt, but. That's still, if you're Severance, you're not feeling completely horrible about that one because you were able to get a survivor out the door. And if you ask me, I do think Cartney was cheated a little bit on that hatch. I think, I think they should have gotten it. That that's my thought on it. But you know, it is what it is. We are going to be going to, I believe it's a Demogorgon set, right after this mm -hmm. break. Hello everyone and welcome back to Severance versus Elysium. We have Pedro playing the Demogorgon for Elysium against the survivors of Severance. I'm surprised that there's no Xeno, but there's he's probably playing in another tournament somewhere. That's how these <laughs> things go. You get massive roster so you can double book yourself with no problem. And we got already in a chase with Potato. You get away from that Fangman. I have Fang Bang. And, uh, very quick first hit. We do have the Blood Favor in effect. And I think that might have been a lie combined with the hit. Because that was a lot of distance that Potato was able to get. But now, caught out in the open. Not really going to be able to make it to this window safely. And this could just be a down here. No. Ooh. Pedro. And just gets through the window. Goes down. Going back through it. Took a little long to pull the trigger, but that works out. Oh Ooh, my god. Okay. I mean, I wasn't aware that the Demogorgon had any eyeballs, but you know what? Works anyway. Flashlight flying comes through. Potato is going to last a bit longer in this chase before being all mashed up by Pedro. And you're pretty happy with this, right? Uh, you expect your chases with the Demogorgon to last at least a fair amount of time. Anything be better than this is just going to be extra time off the clock. But again, Sephiroth proving that they're not here just to get dumpstered by Elysium, right? They have some team play. They have some good 1v1 play, right? They can make this competitive. They can make Elysium sweat a little bit. Absolutely. And uh, Ward... Kind of the MVP, or kind of the, I'm going to say the protagonist of this match so far. We saw him on the Spirit, and then on the Survivor's Night with good chases. And once more with the flashlight save, and another chase. And a good dodge. And unfortunately, not a good enough palette play, because Blood Favor... About Blood Flavor two, just went two oh seconds too slow. About yeah, two seconds uh, too slow in the cleanse. Something that we can't forget is that this is Azeroth Resting Place. Now, we are used to seeing Demogorgon here a lot. This is such a unique map because of its sort of bottleneck nature. Right? You, it is one of the most diabolical three gen maps in the game simply because you can hold you can start the game, you can pick a side of the map, and you can just commit to those generators and 
there and it, it basically devolves into trench warfare right where you know where the survivors are sat on one side resetting and the killer is just sat on their side and if any attempt is made to go into the other side you're going to be brutally punished for it so that's generally something that happens later in the game I don't imagine the survivors will struggle to complete the first three generators or so. When we get to that, you know, two one gen mark, that's when things will get a bit scary. Things right now are getting very scary for Cartney as we're going to be entering another chase. Nope, never mind. <laughs> Pedro said no. Pedro's just trying to camp this hook out in the middle of the map, trying to ensure that he's able to put pressure, which I think this is the side he claimed as being his. So. Just trying to be able to maintain the pressure on this side, which Cardi is just kind of chilling, working on the generator over here. And Severance lets Ward go second. The second stage has now been secured here onto Ward, which this is probably the go signal for the Demogorgon to start moving at least a little bit, pressure out some other survivors, camping. Camping a early hook to second stage is quite common, and yeah, now you are going to commit. You have a little bit of time here uh, to at least get a hit through onto Allos. Imagine the ability to get every survivor injured up, but you get dragged a little too far away. And like children at the playground, uh, Pedro has said, no, this is my part of the map. And the survivors have gone onto the other side and say, no, it's our part of the map. And then they're going to have a friendly, civil discussion about the side of the map belongs to who. Except if your name is Cartney, at which point you're just going to shred it out. Through the pallet as well. Crazy. The unfortunate thing is, this time it's not actually a deadly curse, but Ward did have to get it activated. So that is unfortunate. Alice goes in for the one for one, and Pedro's just going to take it because he also has Cartney on the ground. This is actually a really bad spot for Severance. The, the game could be over right here. Yeah, you're, you're gonna get Alos. Ward is going to go down, and you've been tr and you can hear that it, they have been attempting uh, Severance to break the three gen on this side of the map, but by trying to get that one in the corner, but it's not going to work. And we're also going to find Potato here. Wait, wait, wait a minute. What? Okay, what's happening here? Carly's on the floor. Carly's gonna go back down. Potato is injured up. Isn't going to have to this. Oh no. Potato does have the unbreakable, but at this point it's up to Ward. This is uh This is a struggle. I think the plan is Ward is gonna take him as far to the other side of the map as possible. And then it's just gonna be a an unbreakable play to get some stuff done. Yeah, that's and, what we're gonna have to see. I, yeah. I think I did. I think I did have a bit of an internet moment. Uh, apologies, everyone. Um, and Pedro is having a, <laughs> Pedro is having not quite an internet moment, just a sort of crawling under the floor moment. But yeah, uh, so we're going to be seeing Alice and Potato are still up. I don't imagine Potato is going to be alive for much longer, but it only takes one survivor, right? When everyone recovers to 99%, they are all able to sort of chain these pickups together. So even with Potato sort of inevitably going to be going down here, you get to, you know, the window of this TNL wall, you're bloodlusted, you're able to get the grab through. You, you get Potato on the hook, you're able to get Ward up, and Severance holds on for a little bit longer. Yeah, just a little bit longer. If Cartney does get hooked, though, the game is going to grind to a halt as the last act of Grim and Brace comes through. And uh, Pedro, portaling back across the map to the reset point. Ward was able to be healed. Alice was uh, damaging this generator here. At this point, if you are Severance, you need to not worry about the three gen, and you just need to get other generators done. Because I don't think... I don't think their time in this trial is going to be for much longer. Oh, well, I mean, Alos hops the locker. Hopefully, I guess, the mechanism to buy some time for the gen to pop. We did see that we have that gem being worked on, which should be uh, should be finishing any second now, right? But even for Pedro, I don't even think you're concerned about your own region, right? You know that you're in a 
dominant spot uh, with Alice on the hook. Two survivors injured, Ward dead to rest. If you do end up catching them out at some point, even if you do get to the end game, guess what you have to secure those four kills? Oh, it's a no ed. Once more, the ability to play a survive, to play a killer, sorry, where you expect to get to the end game and not even have to utilize those end game perks, it must be a hell of a confidence boost. Oh, absolutely. And uh, this is, I mean, just two minutes ago, we thought this was over for Severance. Now here we are, two generators left. Unfortunately, it does go down. And I I don't think, this is death hook. This is gonna be the first death of the game. Everyone except for Cartney is on death hook. And Cartney hasn't been hooked once. So that is, uh, I don't have much to say about it. But uh, oh no, we just see the deja vu three gen. Uh, it's gonna be uh, ah well. Uh, any grand dreams that are uh, that the Severin survivors may have had of being able to do a generator this game? I don't believe they will. Uh, again, we are now firmly in Pedro's domain and. Pedro is just ruling over it with an iron fist right now. Large and in charge is going to get Cartney. This is going to be Cartney's first hook. Uh, both of the other survivors are dead on hook, however. Alos is injured up, and you get some cheeky aura reading through onto... Uh, you get some cheeky aura reading through onto Ward. Am I a silly Billy, or is that Grim Embrace? Or... That is Grim Embrace. Whenever it procs, you get aura reading. <laughs> I don't know if it's whenever it procs, but I think when you get the four stack, it procs. You learn something new every day, ladies and gentlemen. Even for a seasoned pro like myself, I'm going to pretend like I have 12,000 hours in this game. I'm not going to tell you the actual amount, because that would be embarrassing. Anyway, uh, the, the gens are all blocked up for this time period. You're able to force ward to the other side of the map, and... You can afford to play this one patiently uh, for demo. You may not have to if you're able to catch it out here, get it down, and you see the amount of security that you have to leave your side of the map. Uh, you're pretty fine uh, right now. You know that Carney isn't going to be pulled. However, this mid jet, this sorry, this gen in Shack is the terror is encroaching, but it is going to be finished. And that can make all the difference, right? Uh, just the one gen differential, that is the main win condition, right? So, big surprise, but also big props to being able to get that last gen done. Oh, not the last gen. Unfortunately. Uh, well, uh, uh, it's the last gen they could have realistically done. I'm going to try and go back on my words and pretend that I'm smarter than I actually am. Yeah, I mean, one of, one of our staff members said it. From 4K4 to 4K1, Unbreakable clutched it. Yeah, that's that just about sums it up. And I mean, for Demogorgon, I don't think I don't think 4K is the standard. I think standard is like six, seven hooks. But uh, it's it's definitely definitely a better result than Severance should have got given the situation yeah i mean things can change depending on the map and that is going to be a tricky map to approach as the survivors but being able to complete four gens i mean you have to be kind of happy with that considering where you were but again the ball is now firmly in uh, the the ball is now firmly in the court of um Elysium, right? They are large, they are in charge, they have the capacity to end this one here and now. Don't go anywhere, ladies and gentlemen. Short break, we're going to have possibly the final trial of the day. Don't go anywhere, we'll be back soon. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Possibly the last trial of the day, possibly the last trial of the weekend that we are seeing right now. And it's on the survivor side, it's on Elysium. I think that we are sort of expecting the Elysium win, but Severance have surprised us today. They have pulled a lot of things out. And here's the issue that we have. Now, every team has to lock in their perks before they get to the match, so there's no unfair advantage, right? You can't afford to get to the end game as war. Simply, if five generators are completed, you have lost the game. Uh, so this Rancor, it will get you some occasional aura reading, 
Uh, but like, the main reason you bring it is for that, you know, guaranteed kill on the obsession at the end, guaranteeing three hook stages. That's not a luxury that you have at this point. So you have a power, which is essentially useless. That being said, you have a power that's not so useless, as you get some very nice shreds that come through. And that is a very early down onto Grena. I want to say that down is almost identical to how the last trial started with uh, Potato on the survivor side. And uh, generators already getting done. This is, uh, this is Elysium. Just doing generators through and no, through. No, the survivors are doing their objective. <laughs> Unbelievable. <laughs> I mean, if you're a ward, that's what you're thinking. Two generators done already. Playing a survival horror game and not Dead by Daylight. Going for a run now, using a life to get some distance. Gets hit anyway. And now the blood favor comes in. Oh, no. Oh, no. That was a good that's... read from Ward. You say a good read from Ward, I do agree, but also a little bit of a rookie error, uh, d dare I say. A little bit of a rookie error, the time there. Not something that we honestly expect. Now, Swatter is going to eat that hit and actually utilize the overcome to avoid having to trade out. Instead, it's going to be Grenau. Has a couple of seconds of borrowed time remaining. Is going to be fading out now. We have a lot of room back into this one because you're stuck in basically the worst possible tile against a Demogorgon. Guess what? It's the straight line with the window at the end of it. Oh no, whatever will a demo do there? Dash, <laughs> use the shred that they have in their kit, maybe? I guess so. <laughs> Alrighty, and that is going to be out all seeing an undying, but I could be wrong. Yeah. It, no, it's just the blood favor gone. No one dying. And, uh. Yeah. Ran out. Reach second stage. Reach. Yeah, three generals nice. completed. Yeah, well, what I would say is we look at our gen spread, uh, right? One, two, it doesn't seem like Ward actually has a. I don't think Ward has the three gen protected on this side. I'd have to have another look, but. Okay, no, never mind. We do have three generators on this side of the map, and if you want to complete all the generators here, you have to play this very carefully for Elysium, especially because that is also where your friend is hooked. It is where all the chases are happening. This is basically, this is the part of the map that you can't play on as the oh, survivors, no. but you are forced to because you have to get those gens done. It isn't enough to do that gen over in the corner, and uh, you can try and drag the survivors. You, you know, you can try and drag the killer all the way over, but... I, I don't think that Ward will take the bait for all that long. Uh, I mean, he's taking the bait right now, and if this chase doesn't, if this chase doesn't end faster, it could be a problem. Here he gets a crazy distance on the hill, but it bounces off of the hitbox, and Ooh. these are just some good dodges from both of these survivors on Elysium. We're doing a good job. Of but Granout goes down and this is just gonna be the kill. Two generators remaining, but he's left that he's left his three gen undefended for a long time and it's almost done. Pain res? Pain res could be massive here. If, if, if Grenau's able to get it, that's partially luck of the draw. Was that a pain res that went off? I heard, I heard a scream. I heard a so, scream. Okay, so the regression did come through on the generator. Is that going to be enough? I don't hear a terror radius. There's I don't think Ward is going to be back in time. In there's... There's mo... How did they... Oh my god. Okay, these guys are insane. Okay. Uh, Elysium, I mean, hey. Second best team in the world. You would expect this level of play from them, right? Uh, they have multiple gens with high progress over on the three gen side of the map. Yes, Grenau is dead, but Swatter is still healthy. I mean, I guess my question is what are they waiting for? And... Well, yeah, that's the three gen broken. Ward right now is just looking around in disbelief, going like, huh, what What did they do? And what are you defending now? Your three gen? What three gen? It, it, it vanished from you ages ago. You don't have any hook progress on any of the other survivors. You have two of them injured. However, that will change just there. And now what? Uh, go to the other side of the map. Try and keep an eye on that generator, as well as the ones over here, which are so far progressed. I believe the term that we use is uh, cooked. 
I believe that's the term the kids are using these days to describe the situation that Ward is in. Yeah, no, it's not. It's not going well for Ward. And I think he had some really good chases. It's just this is Elysium and you played right into their hand. And like on the one hand, I get it. You had to get the tunnel out. But on the other, you just gave up the game. But did you, did you have to get the tunnel out, though? Right? You know that the survivors are going to have to come back to your side of the map eventually. Right? I, I feel like when you're getting dragged that far, if you cannot guarantee that down instantly, that is simply too much of a risk to bear because this map has been figured out. You just know. You know in the back of your mind that you ha cannot really abandon that side of the map or else the survivors are going to jump on that opportunity. Pedro's not even injured in this chase, could just eat a hit here, run over to Shaq, drop the god pallet over there. That's enough time for instantly to, that's enough time for instantly for all these generators to be completed. We can already see Silhay is positioning next to the exit gate. This must mean that Zerka is almost done with whatever generator they're it working on. There it is, 2-0 victory. I mean, making it look, I'd argue making it look easy. Severance did battle him for it, but top of group D, was there any surprise? That's, that's Elysium for you. Yeah, no, I don't, I'm not entirely surprised. I'm actually, this is what we expected from Elysium, but I am impressed with this, the fight that Severance has put up. And it's gonna be another body block play. However, Pedro forced to, to pass back into the map. Ward misses the shred, and now there's two healthy survivors here to take hits. And, uh... Everything at this point is completely ceremonial. It does not matter. The win has been obtained for Alicia. You can get your injury onto Sylvain. They're going to be doing some little shenanigans right now. Will they pet the dog? Swatter will, in fact, pet the dog. Well, I, I, I say that. Demogorgon isn't really the dog of the game anymore, seeing as there is now a literal dog. Uh, in Dracula. <laughs> that being said, I don't think I don't think Dracula Dracula's not playable in DDL right now, right? I don't think so. Maybe, maybe on a maybe on a scrim night we'll see the dog get petted or something. However, uh, huge congratulations to uh, Elysium for that win. Very clean, very solid. Not really sure what else we were expecting.